Hi friends, and welcome my fire enthusiasts, my super savers. This episode is dedicated to you. How many of you have the opposite problem of what most people in America have? You don't have any credit card debt, you have money invested in all sorts of assets from stocks to bonds, maybe real estate or even businesses. You make a good salary, you have great job security, and yet you still feel somewhat guilty about spending money on yourself. You have no problem spending on others, but when it comes to taking care of you, something inside says, nah, this is inappropriate. Better save it. Imagine what the ROI would be. I think a lot of this stems from our old identities that we refuse to kill, and we all probably have them. How many of you think that people who shop at Whole Foods are snobby? I remember thinking in the early 2000s that I could never imagine myself stepping foot in there and buying groceries. I grew up as a poor kid in East LA, so this isn't me and it will never be me even if I ended up making money. I told myself, oh, that's for rich folk as I carried on going to Safeway. And I would think that people who shopped at Whole Foods must think that they were elitists who thought that they were better than me. In other words, I decided to fabricate this perception of those folks as a way to protect my own ego. Do people at Whole Foods actually go around thinking that they're better than everyone else? Doubtful. Do people at Whole Foods fist bump other people shopping there and congratulate each other for being part of the bourgeoisie? Also no. People aren't thinking of this stuff. It's all in your head. They are just there to get good produce. It is literally as simple as that. By the way, this isn't sponsored or anything, but uh, shouldn't it be? Anyway, it took me a long time to actually get comfortable with the idea of shopping at Whole Foods. It required a bit of desensitization therapy, starting with just stepping foot into the store, looking at prices and then walking out, then picking up a banana and putting it back down, and then gradually just buying one item. And now I go there without really thinking twice anymore. I enjoy the selection and the freshness. The veggies and fruits there seem to last a bit longer. Sure, it's relatively more expensive, but on an absolute scale compared to my income, what's an extra 25 to $50 a week? Most people will be able to blow 25 to $50 on practically anything these days, but it took me a long time to see that this is something that's okay for me to do. Not this spending of those dollars, but taking on an identity as a whole food shopper. I specifically remember saying in college whenever I saw anything remotely nice as, oh, that's rich, as if nice things are not meant for me. We sometimes otherize the rich to feel better about ourselves because sadly, maybe we don't think we could ever be rich ourselves. We call people who are more well off snobby or snooty. And yet somehow when you get to that next level of income, you still have these vestigial thoughts, these identities perhaps that have served us to help us feel better in the past. But when they stop serving us, it is wise to start letting go of some of these identities to get to the next level of true happiness. I have a friend who makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, lives on a mansion on a hill, and yet will go out of his way to wait in the long returns line at Costco just to price adjust a few tens of dollars. He'll argue about grocery bag fees at markets. I can't really judge him because I also do some of these things. Not exactly, but as an example, I used to always check gas prices even after being much more financially stable. I would clutter my phone with all these apps to save a few pennies, maybe a dollar. To be clear, I make over a dollar a minute after taxes at my current job as a physician, so there should be no reason to be wasting any time clicking on these discounts. Only recently did I stop looking at the price of strawberries. I used to always wait for stuff to go on sale, obsessively checking prices, probably spending hours over the course of months clicking and thinking and waiting. One of my toxic time drains was to go on slick deals to find the absolute lowest price for an item. And then if an item was even $20 more than the lowest price ever, I would have this mental block that prevented me from purchasing the item, knowing it was cheaper at some point in the past, even if I rationally knew that the price would never be that low again. Does this happen to you or is it just me? I think the trouble is this. We still don't know how to appropriately value our time on this earth. We see $20, but we don't see how much time and energy we waste analyzing that $20. During that time, I could have made another $20. I used to take so much time to find coupon codes and would feel ripped off if I found out that I could have saved an extra $4 if I had used a certain credit card or purchased it in some roundabout way. And you know, honestly, it wasn't like I was buying a whole bunch of stuff either. What I was 
doing was continuously attempting to sell, solve money problems that I had in the past when those money problems don't actually exist anymore in the present. In life, problems don't go away. You should just aim to have better problems. And at your income and potential income level, ask yourself this, are you solving the appropriate money problems? Like if your income is $500,000 a year, are you still trying to find ways to save $5? You should be solving $5,000 problems or at the very, very least $500 problems. Your time is valuable. Don't squander it. Easy for me to say, but hey, we're all trying to improve and learn together, right? Part of living a rich life is learning how to spend your money to bring you joy. I will openly admit that I'm a horrible spender, meaning I almost never purchase things for myself, to a fault. For my birthday, my wife got me this pair of Nike Dunks that I've been eyeing for like eight months, and I just couldn't bring myself to buy them even though I could comfortably afford them. It was so liberating that she got these for me as she did something for me that I, I really couldn't do myself. I still harbor this weird guilt from the past, this scarcity mindset. And some of us are very good at hiding this too, even to ourselves. We'll say things like, oh, I don't see the value in that as we justify our frugality. Or we look too much into things like opportunity costs and potential return on investment over a purchase of $100. If you make six figures and focus too much energy optimizing even small purchases, you're actually hindering yourself at a chance at more wealth creation. So I had to come up with some new rules. For those of you who make good money, at the very least six figures, and also have this spending aversion problem, I propose you to do this. If an item is, say, $50 or less, just buy it that day if you want it. You can't let $50 decisions hold you back in life and prevent the abundance that you want to create. It just doesn't make any sense. It won't hurt you, and the brain power zapped away by these decisions will actually be more detrimental. If it is $100, add it to your cart, wait at least a week, take it off your mind, and if a week later it's still there on your mind, just purchase it. If it's $1,000, set a date, say one month from now, and purchase the item whether it is on sale or not, if it is still on your mind. Let's not let these things take up more brain space than they should. Instead, use that space for rest and relaxation, spending quality time with people you care about, or wealth creation instead. So back to this topic of time. It was reasonable to have money insecurity back when you didn't have much. It served you well, right? It taught you the value of hard work, the value of seeking the right opportunities, the value of saving, the value of investing. It got us to where we are right now. And you are probably more well off today compared to many others because you had this hunger and this drive to break the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. But now you have a different problem. You've graduated. Your problem to solve now is how to value your time and your mental energy. Start with putting a dollar amount to your time. Stay at the rate of money that you usually make at your job. And if something costs less than that per hour, you need to outsource it. Give someone else the opportunity to earn a living. So that may mean cooking less and ordering delivery or takeout more, which allows you to save time and allows you to support local businesses and give folks the chance to put a roof over their heads and food on their plates. When you didn't make as much in the past, then yeah, cooking at home solved the money problem you had before. And don't get me wrong, if cooking brings you joy and you enjoy the health benefits, by all means, do it. But don't do it just to save a couple bucks. That's not your problem anymore. Another thing to outsource, cleaning. Hire cleaners. Again, if you truly derive joy from cleaning and it's worth it to you to spend hours cleaning rather than working or spending time on other hobbies or with friends and family, by all means, do it. If it brings you to a moment, a point of zen, obviously. Otherwise, hire someone and give someone else a chance to earn a fair wage. You'll create a win-win situation and you're also helping someone else with their own health, with their own self-sustenance. I think some of us take pride in having everything done ourselves. Like we like this term self-made, but really you will get that much farther in life when you learn to outsource and you create mutually beneficial arrangements with those around you. Our time on earth is limited and it's great that there are so many like-minded fire folks out there who don't want to work day in, day out forever, who value time with people we care about, who want to work on passion projects. We just have to remember to enjoy life throughout, even on our journey towards fire. Spend generously on the things that you actually enjoy and you should stop letting your guilt that got you this far in life stop you from getting to the next level of happiness. Let's adapt, let's evolve, let's improve our well-being. And that's all for today, my friends. So what identities are holding you back? What kind of toxic money traits are you willing to share that you want to improve? 
and what new identities would you want to create for yourself? If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with another sacrificial fire enthusiast. And don't forget to subscribe to Guana Fire for more stimulating talks about money. So happy saving, happy spending, happy investing, and let's get financially savvy together.